Welcome to the 17th episode of Nature Speaks, brought to you by Himalayan Nature. We have with us Dr. Tulsi Subedi, sir, Director of Himalayan Nature for technical support. And as always, I am Aditi, your moderator for the session. Um, it's already 26th September today, almost um, nine months after the first discovery of this global pandemic in December last year. And if there is one thing we all as a society have to acknowledge is that the conservation of wildlife, biodiversity and the vital ecosystem services it generates is one of the greatest challenge humanity faces. Wildlife and their fragile population has been affected by the pandemic and already endangered species are now even more threatened. Because it has long been suggested that char charismatic species attract a disproportionate amount of attention and resources in conservation, there is a threat of conservation of wildlife being diverted to charismatic species post-pandemic, leaving many other equally important species neglected from being conserved. For instance, listed as vulnerable in the IUCN Red List, the clouded leopards are solitary species found mostly in the Himalayan foothills through mainland Southeast Asia to Southern China. Perceived to be rare in the country, these medium-sized wild cats are one of the least known cat species in Nepal, with their population suspected to be fewer than 10,000 and also in a decreasing trend. So to put more focus on conserving the clouded leopard, we have with us Mr. Yadav Kimire, an experienced conservation biologist associated with NGO Friends of Nature and heads the wildlife research wing at the organization. Mr. Kimire completed his MSc in Environmental Management from School of Environment Management and Sustainable Development, Pokhara University, and postgraduate diploma in International Wildlife Conservation Practice from Oxford University. He is is an extremely passionate individual, especially for a small and intermediate cat species, and has been carrying out his research in clouded leopard in Annapurna conservation area. And he is here with us today to share more about his studies. So let's welcome him. Namaste Yadav sir, and welcome to the Nature Speak series. Namaste. Namaste. Thank you very much, uh, Didi. Thank you. Thank you, Yadav, sir. I'll just let you start um, with your presentation before uh, making a quick uh, announcement to the audience that if, um, if you have any questions regarding the presentation, please use the chat option, which will be available shortly before the presentation ends. Uh, our speaker, Yadav, sir, will try to answer as many of your questions as time allows. And with that, I'd like to start, ask Yadav, sir, to start with his presentation. Okay. Thank you, Aditi. Uh, first of all, uh, I can see there are uh, people from across the world. So I'd like to uh, say good morning, good afternoon, good evening to all of you and a big namaste. Uh, and I'll move to uh, the presentation. Uh, Is the screen being seen by all? Yes, sir. Yes. Thank you. Okay. Uh, today, I'm going to present uh, about uh, clouded leopard in Nepal, uh, the research efforts, conservation efforts, uh, and even the history of clouded leopard in Nepal. Uh, I'm Yadav Kimire. Uh, okay, so let's move. So, uh, clouded leopards are a cat species, one of the cat species, one of the 41 cat species in the world. Uh, and Nepal has 12 species of cats uh, and clouded leopard is one of them. And there are some unique features of clouded leopard. Uh, like uh, they are, like most of the cat species, they like to uh, climb uh, trees, but uh, some of them are like very, very skilled climber and uh, clouded leopard is uh, one of them. So it's highly arboreal and it has some adaptations which uh, helps it to uh, uh, live in trees. Like it has rotating ankles in its hind limbs. It has super long tail for balancing and extra long canines. Uh, in, in proportion to the body size, uh, it has the longest canine of any cat species in the world. So the, this species was described in Nepal uh, during 1840s. Uh, by Brian Hodson. Uh, 
who was a British resident uh, at the time. Uh, the distribution of powdery leopard in the world is something like this. Fragmented, highly fragmented. Uh, it's found from central Nepal to eastwards. China, Bangladesh, Bhutan, India, Northeast India, Myanmar, Thailand, Cambodia, Malaysia, Laos, and Vietnam. And in Nepal, we don't know much about its distribution in proper. So we have, we have some uh, occurrence points. Uh, like here we can see these, these red uh, points are uh, clouded leopard, uh, the points from where clouded leopard has been recorded in Nepal. So this is the westernmost clouded leopard uh, uh, records, even in the world. The points are very few, so we haven't been able to uh, do some kind of uh, species distribution modeling. We only have around 20 points, so it, it doesn't give uh, much reliable uh, distribution. So we have to come up with that data. So with the history, the clouded leopard was first, uh, after Brian Hodgson described it in 1840s, there was a big gap there was no record about this species. And in 1988, uh, there was a, one record of uh, one individual in lowland Nepal, uh, which was radio colored. And it was also the first radio colored uh, clouded leopard in the world. So it was uh, monitored for around 10 days. Then it, it started moving uh, north, north and uh, the connection was lost. And since uh, the focus of that research team was on tiger, so they didn't uh, uh, try to go uh, uh, after the species. So. Then there were some sporadic incidents uh, of uh, clouded leopard being seen in Pokhara, um, in Janapur, uh, um, and there, there were some incidents. So the first effort to uh, uh, to uh, do uh, some kind of uh, presence absence survey of uh, clouded leopard was in 2009 in Langtang National Park. Uh, as you can see, this is Kathmandu in the central of uh, Nepal, and north of Kathmandu is Langtang National Park. So this is Langtang National Park. There was a very short and uh, with uh, three, four camera traps, I think. Uh, there was an effort, but uh, they were unsuccessful in recording the species. Then there was uh, a survey in 2009 and 10, uh, where I myself was involved. Uh, <clears throat> we did a presence absence survey of clouded leopard in Makalu National Park, which lies in the east, eastern part of Nepal, east from Kathmandu. You, as you can see, this red flag shows the, the location of uh, Makalu National Park. Uh, the survey effort wasn't that high, it was 1184 trap nights. Uh, and during that survey, 25 species were recorded. We didn't record any live clouded leopard. We didn't record them in camera, but we did record some of the pelts. So we, we talked with people and uh, we came to know that the species is there, but maybe uh, our survey effort was too low or we didn't uh, put our survey effort in the particular habitat that this uh, species lives in. Then, <clears throat> then there was another survey in 2010 in Sibapuri National Park, which is just on the outskirts of uh, outskirts of uh, Kathmandu, and this was done by Sibapuri Na Nagarju National Park office itself. So the good thing was they recorded the species. So we. As, as a resident of Kathmandu, I am very proud that clouded leopard lives in the forests around us. And then, then there was another survey in 2011 and 12 in Annapurna Conservation Area. Uh, it's in the west of Kathmandu, near uh, a city uh, called Pokhara. And we also recorded a clouded leopard, but we had to like search too much for this because this uh, this clouded leopard was on the corner of a photo which was not uh, well lit out and we had to check the photo again and again to uh, come up with the photo. 
And then there was another survey in Langtang National Park again in 2015. This was done by uh, Wildlife Conservation and Research Unit, University of Oxford and Bear Conservation Nepal jointly. So they had uh, 21 independent records of cloudy leopard uh, which showed that the species was largely crepuscular which, which is uh, the common uh, general pattern of this species uh, across the world and the occupancy estimate was 10.1 percent but there was little data to predict uh, about uh, the parameters which influence uh, how the species is using the habitat. Um, in, in Langtang National Park. <clears throat> then in 2017, we thought that uh, we should collect all the occurrence data of cloudy leopard and maybe uh, write up something. So we wrote uh, this small uh, article in uh, Oryx. Uh, so this around 20 uh, records we collected, some were unconfirmed, unconfirmed record from Western part of Nepal. Some people have visited since then, but uh, there has been no uh, success. Then in Annapurna Conservation Area, again, we tried to do a survey uh, on occupancy framework. So this is Annapurna Conservation Area. This, this was our study area. What we did was we uh, randomly put a regular distance point of one kilometers in our, across our study area. Then we randomly selected uh, 53 uh, points as we had that many camera traps only. And then we uh, went to the location and then we tried to uh, look for the points. And if the points were inaccessible, we, uh, we uh, put the camera traps uh, in, in, in areas, we, in locations which were very nice, close to those uh, random points. So this the survey effort was high considering uh, previous survey efforts. So we had like 4,345 uh, trap nights. Uh, we got 23 species of mammals in our uh, uh, photos. And one species was new for Annapurna Conservation Area, which was, which was never recorded uh, in that area before. So that was a wild dog, Asiatic wild dog or dhol as we know. And we also got cloudy leopards. Uh, we, uh, we guessed that there might be uh, four individual cloudy leopards. We could differentiate three cloudy leopards from the patterns because they were all were from the uh, right flank, but one was from the left flank. So we couldn't uh, uh, like uh, confirm uh, that this was the fourth individual, but based on the location, how far it was and how disturbed area were in between, we thought there could be at least four individual cloudy leopards. And the area uh, that we surveyed was uh, around 100 square kilometers. So uh, there was another interesting uh, uh, species which we discovered, spotted linsang. Uh, this was like this, this is the first photograph of uh, spotted linsang from Nepal. So that's why it is uh, very important. So this species has never been recorded before. So after this photo, there, there have been some other photos of uh, this species also in Eastern Nepal. Now, <clears throat> uh, we, have, uh, we have done some research, but like, there have been very little data to uh, to um, come up with uh, important parameters like occupancy or density estimate or their activity pattern. It's very few data, so it's really difficult. Uh, and, and there are a lot of threats uh, to this species. Like, uh, Overdependence on forest is one of the most important. As you can see here, the stack of firewood, this is for one family. And there are a lot of stacks like this. And this is just uh, like one village. In every village, it's like this. So this is one of the uh, important threats. And, and the threat that is coming up, which is 
becoming more and more uh, pronounced is uh, the development of infrastructures in, in uh, prime uh, cloud leopard habitat. As you can see here, there's a road being constructed. This is a road and there's a hydropower being constructed in, in this river. There's a river, small river. There's a hydropower being constructed and in, in, in the cloudy leopard habitat in Annapurna conservation area, in the lower part of Annapurna conservation area, there are over 50, uh, around 50 uh, uh, hydropower projects, which have either some of them are already being operated in operation. Some have like uh, the every studies, feasibility studies have been completed and they are being constructed and some are uh, like uh, they are doing uh, environmental impact assessment uh, studies. So this is a big threat. <clears throat> and this is a very interesting uh, threat. Now, previously, we didn't know. We, uh, when I was looking through literatures, uh, the illegal wildlife trade, it, it didn't seem to, uh, like cloudy leopard, didn't seem to get involved in this wildlife trade, or there was no, uh, uh, not many people were caught with clouded leopard pelts uh, or or live clouded leopards. We we uh, had like very little uh, evidence of that. But since 2015 and 16, we started looking at newspaper clips from uh, previous days, uh, and uh, uh, like maybe because of the online uh, digital media has like reach everywhere in Nepal. So most of the these small seizure cases have also been like uh, recorded uh, by the media and uh, we, we can see uh, these uh, news of cloudy leopard being held uh, like cloudy leopard pails being seized by uh, enforcement agencies. So when we started collecting the data was it it isn't uh, as big threat as in Southeast Asia, where like you will get like hundreds of uh, cloudy leopard pelts uh, during survey. But as you see, uh, this is on the y-axis we have number of pelts seized, and uh, in the x-axis we have the years, and it's regular. At least one two pelts every year, uh, and some of the uh, people who work on illegal wildlife trade, they say that around nine to 10% of uh, these cases are only, they only are seized. Otherwise, most of the uh, cases, they, uh, most of the pelts are wildlife parts, they reach to the destination. So if, if we believe that, then like we uh, had like around 36 uh, individual cloudy leopard pelts, and all the body parts uh, from uh, 1990, it, it, it could be like into 10 times. So 360 from nine, uh, 1990, 360 individual cloudy leopard, if we believe uh, that that uh, figure. So it's a, a dark um, a picture kind of uh, thing for cloudy leopard. <clears throat> so based on all these threats, we have, um, uh, started uh, uh, conservation uh, programs. Basically, we do targeted sensitizations uh, to students. Uh, this is uh, one of the picture, uh, one of the recent pictures. This was done in 2019 only. Most of the uh, time we deal with students as they, they are fascinated with uh, wild animals also, and they can be a very good uh, ambassadors uh, for like, dissemination of uh, conservation awareness uh, and stuff. And then we, uh, outside the classroom also, we deal with students. We take them uh, to the cloudy leopard eco trips for student. We show them how a camera trap works and what kind of habitat does a cloudy leopard live in and what are do's and don'ts when we visit uh, forests and how, how they could help. And uh, ready programs, it's like reaching a large number of people uh, is difficult. So radio program is 
uh, one important uh, medium to do that. So a lot of uh, people, they listen to radio FM stations. So we develop radio programs where we talk about cloud leopards, the interesting um, ecological stuff about the species, uh, how does it help humans, um, and, and what we could do, the, the, the threat uh, uh, that has been uh, the, the threat face, faced by cloud leopards and, and what people could do uh, to, to reduce those threats and to conserve uh, the species. And in the more recent time, we have realized that uh, if we can reach the policymakers, then that's a very important, uh, important way, uh, a very nice way to uh, ensure that the species are conserved. We work with local politicians in our study area. Uh, and in our study area, the local politicians, they were convinced. And uh, due to our effort, they have uh, provided some kind of official status to the cloud leopard, like a mammal of Madhi Rural Municipality, which is our study area, Madhi Rural Municipality. So the local policymakers, they have uh, designated an official status, like, like national uh, mammal, similar to that, they have, uh, 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 designated cloud leopard as the official mammal of uh, Madhi Rural Municipality. It was a really uh, nice gesture and they have also uh, committed to support uh, financially also in the coming years um, in uh, the conservation effort of cloud leopard in that particular area. So th this was really nice, uh, uh, nice achievement for us to say. And we do herders interaction programs. There are a lot of herders in the cloudy leopard habitat. They live with cloudy leopards. Uh, sometimes cloudy leopards might prey on the livestock. So we talk with them. Uh, we listen to what they have to say, uh, the problems faced by them. Maybe we try to uh, solve those problems and uh, also listen, uh, hear about the occurrence records of cloudy leopard if they have seen. So this kind of interactions um, we uh, organize. And we also celebrate cloudy leopard day. Uh, this is different to uh, the international cloudy leopard day. International cloudy leopard day is on August 4th, uh, but this is different. We uh, did this in March uh, 19, in 2019. Uh, in 2020, it was, uh, uh, disturbed because of this pandemic, uh, but we plan to continue this uh, Cloudy Leopard Day celebration. Uh, we go to schools, we talk with students, we show them the documentary movies, we take them to hikes, we interact with students, we hand them over posters and other educational materials uh, for the libraries. Uh, we organize uh, Cloudy Leopard painting competitions and all those stuff, the things that uh, kids love uh, and we spend the whole day with them discussing, talking, uh, enjoying. Uh, so when we look at uh, what we have done, we have like, we have organized over 30 conservation camps, reaching out uh, to more than 1000 students uh, and over 10 public conservation camps. Uh, we uh, gather people from the village and uh, uh, show them uh, PowerPoints, documentary about cloudy leopards and tell them how uh, important cloudy leopards uh, could be uh, for them. And uh, two radio programs we have uh, done, uh, over a thousand uh, posters produced out of which we have distributed uh, uh, around 500. Uh, we have celebrated cloudy leopard day as I uh, also shown in the previous slide and three hiking events uh, for students uh, to the cloud leopard habitat. And uh, in 2019, uh, we secured a funding from European Outdoor Conservation Association through public voting. Uh, I think many of you uh, who are here, you uh, might have also voted for our project. So thank you for that. 
And in the next two years, we have uh, some programs, uh, activities which we plan to uh, carry out uh, to uh, reduce the threats on Cloud Leopard. Uh, we would uh, give nature guide trainings uh, to the local youth. Uh, since the area is also visited by a lot by birders and other researchers, so nature guide trainings to the local youth uh, could be important as they, they will have an alternate source of income as this research group and birding groups, they visit the area, uh, they can hire uh, the local guys uh, for the trips and they can have uh, an alternative source of income. And the villages there, they also have homestay. A lot of uh, people from the nearby cities, they uh, visit these villages for uh, like in the weekends, uh, they visit the area like uh, Himalayan range uh, peaks uh, are seen very nice uh, view so people visit and there's a, a nearby there's a glacial lake which is at the lowest altitude in Nepal and people come to visit that also so the homestay has been uh, very popular in the recent uh, years so we uh, also have homestay management training where uh, we uh, tell uh, we collect uh, uh, we provide training to the homestay uh, managers so that they can have like a better uh, homestay and the people who visit that area they'll have nicer uh, stays and we have like forest fighting training a lot of uh, forest fires are seen uh, during the dry months dry season so we'll have forest fighting training and we'll provide them equipments too uh, we also plan to uh, nominate uh, Cloudy Leopard ambassadors, the people who are respected in the villages and who have worked on cloud, uh, nature conservation before and we'd like to nominate them as ambassadors so that people listen to them because they are respected. Uh, and we also uh, have planned to install uh, predator deterrent uh, fox lights in, in the livestock uh, corals uh, so that uh, the livestock depredation, which is one of the uh, reason why uh, people retaliate uh, and kill the predators, so so that the predators uh, they don't come towards the livestock corals, and consequently uh, the life uh, retaliatory killings are also decreased. And as usual, uh, conservation camps uh, for students and general people. It, it's always there. It's always there. So these are uh, these are some of the activities, uh, not all. So these we are uh, going to do uh, in the next two years. And recently, uh, since we were not successful in getting good uh, amount of data with uh, camera traps, so what uh, we plan to do is a scat-based monitoring of cloud leopard in Annapurna conservation area. Uh, we recently. Uh, got a small funding from Panthera. So the work, it starts in early 2021. Uh, we plan, we'll collect the SCAT and from the DNA, uh, we'd like to estimate the density, occupancy, diet, and SCAT morphometrics. One of the problem, one of the major problems with cloudy leopard research is we can't do a sign-based uh, survey. I'm not sure about Southeast Asia, but here uh, we, we cannot do because uh, we don't find pug marks often, very uh, few, and uh, scats we can't identify. We, we have no idea how does a cloudy leopard scat looks like. So what we like to, actually the main purpose of this research is to come up with the scat morphometrics and while while we work with scat morphometrics, we can do many things like density, occupancy, and diet. So with scat morphometrics, with the diameter of the scat, average di diameter of cloudy leopard scat, if we know that, uh, how does it look like these parameters? If we know this, then we can at least uh, in the future, we can even do a scat-based uh, presence absence survey with some level of certainty uh, at the moment. Uh, we can't do anything like that. 
So, and uh, we have future plans. Uh, we plan to do a presence absence survey of Clouded Leopard in at least three new sites. Uh, we know there are, there are Clouded Leopards are present in some of the sites, but in most of the other areas, in large part of the areas, we, we don't know anything. So we'd like to uh, look for three sites that, are, like, that have the potential to uh, provide habitat for Clouded Leopard but nobody knows. So we'd like to uh, visit those areas and do a presence action survey uh, very soon. And uh, we are collecting the individual locations of uh, Cloudy Leopard, as many as possible, so that we have at least 35 to 40 confirmed Cloudy Leopard records, locations, so that we can perform species distribution modeling for identifying important areas for this species. We don't know anything about that. So we are um, seeking for new locations each day uh, and start long-term ecological study on cloud leopard and its prey species, probably in Annapurna conservation area. Um, let's see, that's the plan. Uh, this is a little far-fetched, but I'm positive. We want to perform population habitat viability analysis of the species for Nepal. I'm not sure when we'll be able to do this, but I'm, I'm crossing my fingers, maybe soon. Uh, we need a lot of uh, information, uh, ecological information for this, uh, but let's see. And uh, we'd also like to initiate Cloudy Leopard Research Grants for university students. This is one of the priority because till now, uh, there are very few people in Nepal who really would like to work on cloudy leopards because the chances of uh, not recording this species or uh, chances of let's say uh, uh, not getting any data is very huge so people they don't uh, want to take risk and uh, we'd like but we'd like to encourage people coming uh, to study cloudy leopards to look to the new area and go there look whether Cloudy leopards, uh, even the presence absence survey, uh, surveys are so important at this point because we don't know and they are diminishing each day. And um, then till now we have like all the activities, uh, it's almost random or haphazard, let's say, because we don't have an action plan. We don't know what to do now and next year and the two years after. We, we don't have any uh, plans. So we'd like to develop a Cloudy Leopard Action Plan for Nepal by 2025, latest. So that's the latest. We'd like to uh, develop an action plan before that. Uh, we are working on it. And uh, right now we are doing Cloudy Leopard Conservation Program um, in the lower part of Annapurna Conservation Area. We'd like to expand this to uh, at least three other sites. Um, sorry, this seems to be repeated. Sorry for that. Initiate Cloudy Leopard Research Grants for university students. And then work closely with local government agencies and local people for Cloudy Leopard Conservation. Uh, from our experience, we uh, came to know that uh, the local policymakers, they are so important. Local Provincial, uh, national, all policymakers are important, but we can really reach to the local policymakers. So, uh, as shown by our experience uh, with rural, uh, Madhi rural municipality, it's very important. So, we we'd like to work with more local government agencies uh, so that uh, we can uh, tell them how important it is uh, to conserve clouded leopards and how they can help. Uh, acknowledgement, there have been many uh, organizations who uh, supported it. I didn't uh, write individual's name here because it would get too lengthy, uh, but we'd like to uh, acknowledge all organizations and uh, individuals who have supported us and who uh, support, who uh, plan to support us in the future. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, this is it. Thank you very much.
Thank you. Thank you, Yellow Sir. Um, we have many questions regarding the presentation, lots of questions coming from the audience. So without losing any time, I'd like to get on to the Q&A session. Are you ready for the question, sir? Sure. Okay. Uh, we have our first question from Marcus Cotton, and um, um, he's asking, how are runoff river micro hydro project a threat to clouded leopards? Uh, hydropower in itself might not be uh, the threat to cloudy leopards, uh, but uh, since uh, run of the river cloud, uh, hydropower also, they need a road uh, to reach there because they are most most of these uh, hydropowers are in the remote areas in uh, in in good pristine habitats. So because of the roads and the camp for the workers. And there's no monitoring of those camps, workers, what they do in their pastime beside working. So do they hunt prey species? Do they hunt cloudy leopard? Are they involved in uh, illegal wildlife trade? Nobody knows. So that's still a big threat, even if it's a run of the river hydropower. Okay. Um, relating to the hydropower question, we have another question from Bibek Arialji. And he's asking, has your research made some influence on the ongoing EIA for hydro projects? For instance, to not develop the project or to do it somewhere else rather than the habitat of the species? Uh, <clears throat> I think uh, I'm not the right person to uh, answer this question, but I uh, still like to uh, uh, touch uh, upon the answer. Uh, like most of these hydropowers, uh, our study area, it's in Annapurna Conservation Area, it's a protected area, and it has a proper system. If somebody has to, uh, some uh, people or organization, they have to develop uh, some kind of infrastructures there. So they have to go through the process. But uh, in, in some cases, what happens is, even if the Annapurna Conservation Area, it says that uh, the particular project is not suitable because it's in the prime habitat of cloudy leopard or black bear or common leopard, but still the proponents of those projects, the people who uh, uh, who think of getting benefit from those projects, they use some other ways to influence the process. So yeah, it's 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 not a like it's it's not a not an ideal situation, but but that's that's what is happening. And most of the EIA studies uh, carried out are like, I have written an article on uh, uh, how EIA studies uh, have been done, mostly in case of how they look at the issues of wildlife. It's, it's horrendous, it's crazy. Okay. Um, another question from Karan Sasser. Um, do you think there are different color morphs of clouded leopard in Nepal? Uh, no idea, no idea at all. Uh, because we have, till now we have uh, only the normal uh, Pella's clouded pattern, uh, clouded leopard. So even uh, even even across the world, not not much is uh, known about uh, those uh, pillage or the pillages. Okay, uh, we have a question from Jens Hauser. Do you have any livestock programs for clouded leopard as they have for snow leopards? Uh, clouded leopard, actually, uh, clouded leopard is known, not known to, at least we don't have uh, documented or authentic evidence of clouded leopard predating heavily on uh, livestock. Uh, mm -hmm. It's very rare. So most of the time it's common leopard, and jackal, and even wild dog, the dole. So we don't have that particular program for cloudy leopard, but in the same area, we are also working on uh, working with a dole. So Asiatic wild dog. We, have, uh, we haven't yet started because of this pandemic, but we plan to do an insurance, livestock insurance scheme for uh, Asiatic wild dog, which is like, which can be uh, a nuisance animal uh, as per the livestock herders. We do have, but not for cloudy leopards. Okay. Um, question from Nomuna Lamichane. Do you have any information on the human wildlife conflict in case of clouded leopards? No, I have not documented. The, 
I have heard some people, but like the evidence, the proper evidence, authenticity of those uh, records are, uh, I, I haven't come across. Mm -hmm. So I have to say, I, I don't know. Um, another from JVT Murthy. How often is the census of the clouded leopard conducted? And what is the present number of clouded leopards in Nepal? Uh, this is a very difficult question. The, the only estimate available for clouded leopard is, um, uh, it was done in two, 2010. It was not a census. It was not, uh, not a, uh, an estimation in a small area and extrapolation. It was just a, a while, not while, I'd not say, educated guess. So, I was also involved there and a lot of naturalists and wildlife researchers, we sit together and we brainstormed. Okay, we have recorded cloud leopard from this place, this place, this place, and this could be the pro uh, habitat. Maybe 100 cloud leopards. So that number was like that. So uh, one document uh, called Nepal's uh, status of uh, red list of Nepal's mammal that document gives that number, but it was an educated guess, nothing more than that. And uh, in Langtang, the study I talked about, they have said three individuals. In our study area, we had like four individuals in 100 square kilometers. So, but it's difficult to extrapolate based on that. Uh, but I'd say over 100, below 200. If, if you have to, the range is very high because we don't have um, proper uh, estimated numbers of any area. Uh, question from Sum Suman Gimireji. Any particular threats that should be addressed first to protect clouded leopard? Uh, I don't think uh, there's one threat which is more important than other. Uh, but I think at the moment, uh, it's infrastructures development and over dependence on forest that that too are like let's say habitat loss habitat loss is a very big threat uh, how can we separate the scat of clouded leopard from common leopard i know you did uh, say that not uh, not much study has been done on it but i think if there is any particular distinction that can be used I, I don't know, but I think uh, based on diameter, it should be around 2, two centimeter to 2.5 centimeter, let's say. I'm, I'm not sure. But on other accounts, it, it cannot be differentiated, I think. Okay. Um, what are the criteria for the selection of uh, the three sites of your project? to conduct the presence absence survey of the clouded lepers? Uh, first, uh, uh, one is, uh, it should be uh, like eastward of Annapurna Conservation Area because clouded leopard hasn't been recorded authentically uh, west of Annapurna Conservation Area. So it should be east of Annapurna Conservation Area. Altitude would be uh, an important factor because clouded leopards have uh, they, they have been regularly recorded up to 2,500 meters. There have been uh, records which, ha which are higher than that, but that, that are not uh, regular, I think. We don't know. But up to 3,000 meters eastwards of Annapurna Conservation Area and a little uh, dense kind of forest, not, not patchy forest. So, so th those things will look. Um, what is the ecological benefits of conserving uh, clouded leopard to the farmers? Uh, can you at least point out three to four major benefits? Wow. <laughs> uh, it's, uh, it's really difficult because we know very little about clouded leopards, but uh, clouded leopards, they are known to, they have been believed and they are known to feed on uh, macaques, bears, so one is they regulate the numbers of prey uh, by, uh, by regulating the number of prey species. It is one of the apex carnivores in, in the mid hills of Nepal. So it has a significant impact on the prey population. So mm -hmm. uh, if 
there are no cloudy leopards. Uh, then, of course, there there will be some ecological processes which will lead to increase in the number of prey species. So, of course, increase in the number of prey species it's not uh, very good for farmers. What is that? Another is uh, recently in 2019, uh, Jens Hauser. He is uh, one of the participants here. He photographed uh, a cloudy leopard in Langtang National Park. Uh, and since then, uh, one, two, three. There have been three trips of people who want to take a photo of cloudy leopards. And I was involved in two of those trips. So if we know that a cloudy leopard resides in a particular area and we can see them in 15 to 20 days interval, or if there's a site where, uh, where like we can spend like five, six days and there's a high chance of uh, seeing a cloudy leopard, then a lot of people from across the world, they would, they would come. Wildlife photographers, mammal watchers, a lot of them would come. And uh, that's tourism is one of the uh, another benefits. And there could be other benefits. I, I can't think of it now, uh, but those two are important. Mm -hmm. um, relating to the tourism uh, topic that you just discussed, we have a couple of questions regarding that. First of all is, are you, uh, are you planning in having any ecotourist trips to uh, fund some of your projects or working with other cat organization with similar threats to address them? Uh, sorry, I didn't get the question properly. Uh, we have Yen Hauser who's asking, are you planning okay. in um, having any ecotourist trips to fund some of the projects? Okay. Uh, we, we haven't uh, planned uh, like that, but uh, that could be a very nice uh, way uh, to do to to uh, deviate some some money for cloud level conservation. That's a very nice idea, but mm -hmm. but there should be uh, proper protocols and system in place uh, so that the over uh, the 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 number of people visiting those areas shouldn't be very high, and there should be no disturbance. So those things. Otherwise, it will be a very nice uh, beginning. Mm -hmm. uh, along the line, Priyanka Arial wants to know, uh, can you explain about uh, the ecotourism related to uh, clouded leopard in context of Nepal? Like what prospects do you see for the wildlife and the species? Yeah, as I uh, said, like there have been three trips and there was another trip in December, which which was cancelled because of this pandemic. Uh, the guys who visited in February 2020, they wanted to come in uh, December 2020 also. So there were two other tour companies who contacted me for the possibility of uh, uh, ecotourism, uh, cloud leopard watching. So there's a big prospect. We just have to know the place, site, location where we there's a good chance of seeing uh, a cloudy leopard and uh, like there are two species of cloudy leopards uh, sorry i forgot to uh, mention it in the beginning so one is sunda cloudy leopard which is found in the island of borneo and sumatra indonesia malaysia and one is the mainland cloudy leopard for the sunda cloudy leopards there are some uh, locations where there's a high chance of seeing uh, that particular species, the Sunda cloudy leopard. But the mainland cloudy leopard, it's it's very rare. There there are not many. I I don't think uh, maybe in Thailand, maybe lawn grassmen would be uh, able to uh, answer this if there are some places in Thailand where uh, people could see cloudy leopards. Otherwise, in mainland cloudy leopard would be a great uh, uh, thing for mammal watchers and photographers. If, if we know of a place where we could uh, see it. Okay, uh, question from Baburam Bhattarajji. What kind of livestock are they killing and what is the scenario of livestock depredation or untargeted poisoning or targeted poisoning in cases of clouded leopards? Uh, as, as I told earlier, uh, clouded leopard, we don't know of any uh, 
particular authentic cases where cloudy leopard has uh, predated on livestock people say but it's it's really difficult to believe based on what they describe uh, but there could be uh, cases of poisoning but but the cases of poisoning it's very rare these days previously when in the in the middle hills of nepal there was uh, droll or asiatic wild dog like they used to predate heavy, heavily on livestock so there was a lot of uh, poisoning incidents because of that uh, droll's they were like uh, extinct persecuted heavily from the middle hills of nepal so in many places they they had gone locally extinct uh, in our areas also they had gone locally extinct like 20 25 years ago but they are coming back so based on our camera trap uh, evidences they are coming back we saw like we got the photograph of two different individuals in two different camera traps uh, they haven't yet formed a pack but once they form a pack and since there are not many uh, not large uh, uh, large ungulates in our study area because sambar deer has also been uh, extinct in that area so once the dole form a pack there could be <clears throat> there could be the increase in uh, the incidence of livestock depredation so that that could also instigate this poisoning incidents again but right now we are not uh, aware of uh, those retaliatory killings Okay, thank you, sir. Um, Himanta Raj Mishra ji's question is, uh, would it not be practical at the onset to do the SCAD DNA analysis in Shivapuri Nagarjun National Park, as it would be logistically easy? <clears throat> Actually, it's a very uh, interesting question. Uh, there was one research uh, on the SCAD uh, analysis, diet analysis of common leopard, and uh, one colleague or one uh, friend of mine, his name is Prajol Manandar. He wanted to do the diet analysis of common leopard. So in Sivapuri uh, Nagarjun National Park, and I actually discussed with him uh, to collect the scats and uh, see if you also get a cloudy leopard scat. He didn't get any. Uh, there have been records of cloudy leopard, but he didn't get any scat of cloudy leopards during his uh, scat collection uh, study. So I, I don't think that would be a very uh, good idea. It's, it's an interesting cloudy leopard is there, but I don't know how, why he didn't find. It's difficult to explain. Mm -hmm. um, so do, do you do these clouded leopards have any predators? They are predator species themselves, but um, we have a question who want, uh, questioner who wants to know if the if they have a predator themselves. They uh, they don't have uh, natural predators, but uh, like there's a lot of competition uh, going on as humans also face competi competition from other humans. Uh, these species also face mm -hmm. competition from other species like most of the time it's bigger species. So cloudy leopard shares its habitat with common leopard in most of the, uh, in, in our area, uh, if cloud, common leopard finds it, then it might kill it. There have been no uh, such records, but we have seen tiger killing uh, lynx, tiger killing uh, jungle cats, and tiger killing leopard. Of course, it's very common. Uh, so common leopard might kill a cloudy leopard. That's uh, that's very likely, but uh, we haven't recorded any. But there's a high chance. Mm -hmm. So, are there any records of the breeding biology of these leopards in the wild? Uh, in Nepal, no. Uh, globally, uh, they they have been really following uh, some cloudy leopards in uh, Borneo and Lon Grassman is here as participants. He was the first uh, person to uh, radio color a cloudy leopard uh, except the Nepal one. So he might be able to answer this. Female cloudy leopards was pregnant. Okay. Okay. And really all we could really uh, discover was very, very small home range around the den site. Okay. Very, very reduced movements during the yeah. uh, the denning period. But really, yeah. that's all we know about in the wild. 
um, denning activity. Okay, so very little information. Uh, can you also describe the proper habitat for the species that you have come to know during your project? It's, this is a question by Bibek Arialji. It's previously in the beginning, it was thought that it will inhabit the dense evergreen forest, like primary forest. Then later on, people got the record from secondary forest and logged forest. And recently there was a cloudy leopard record in Nepal from like 3,600 meters. In India, they have uh, like in 3,800 3, meters. So it's like rhododendron forest. So it's really difficult. They are adaptable, but uh, they do uh, avoid uh, monocultures like palm plantations and all. There have been uh, in Borneo, there have been uh, some research which shows that many other species of cat, they visit uh, palm plantations, but cloudy leopards, they rarely do, very rarely. So most of the time, it's, uh, it's big forest. Mm -hmm. Okay, and uh... We have a final question from Sunday Lamitaniji, um, who wants to know, do you think less research has been done on um, this cat? Is it really because of lack of funds or lack of gears like camera traps? Or are there any other issues why the um, research about clouded leopards is so rare in Nepal? I think, uh, I, I, I'm not sure about that, but one of the reasons I, uh, I think I uh, touched it earlier, uh, it could be the, because they are so elusive uh, and we can't do any sign-based surveys, as I told earlier, we can't do any sign-based surveys. So we have to have either uh, DNA-based studies or camera trap-based studies, which will confirm. So it will uh, increase the cost uh, and uh, there's a high chance that you will uh, not uh, get the results you actually look for. And most of the time, what happens is a lot of area in Nepal, we are not sure where cloudy leopards are. So once we know about where cloudy leopards are, then I think more people will come forward uh, to do uh, next level research in Nepal. Okay, thank you, Yado, sir. That was the end of our Q&A session. I'd like to thank Lon as well for taking up the question and um, giving us um, the information on the breeding of clouded leopard. Um, thank you to the audience as well for participating in this session and making it even more interesting through your questions. Um, with that, we've almost come to the end of the program. So before we finish, um, may I ask you, Yado, sir, to give any final remarks? Um, thank you very much for uh, being here uh, and uh, thank you Himalayan Nature for providing this platform uh, to, to uh, express, to uh, tell what we have been doing, uh, to let you all know and talk something about cloud labor, which I really like. Um, and please uh, love wildlife, care for them. Uh, thank you. That's all. Thank you, sir. Um, on behalf of the team, I'd like to thank you again for joining us and sharing such valuable information regarding the small carnivore species uh, that are often overlooked, but uh, very essential for our ecosystem. I'd also like to send my gratitude to the audience for joining in this 17th Nature Speaks series session. I hope it has been an informative evening for everyone. I personally got to know so much history on protecting these clouded leopards and I hope more work gets done in conserving these beautiful species. Uh, we couldn't go live on Facebook due to technical difficulties, but I'd like to inform you that the session was recorded and will be available on the Himalayan Nature's YouTube channel, along with many other previous interesting episodes as well, so you can view them at your convenience. We will be back with another interesting topic next week, so please do follow the Himalayan Nature's page to find out more about it. And with that, Thanking everyone, the audience, Yadav sir, Lon, Tulsi sir again. I wish everybody a good evening and namaste.